this is the actual talk, um, actual title right here. This to do with density poles. This is coming off the Mississippi River and that dies off. The reason I published this paper was I have been a consultant for PetroChina for about 10 years now. This is Dr. Kainang Su. He is the chief of research, that's me. And he said they are celebrating the researches to this year, the 60th anniversary. So in that occasion, they want to publish this special issue. So they invited 20 people, 19 of them are Chinese, and then me. So this paper is published in this one. Before I go into it, I want to explain some of the terminology. This is according to Bates in 1953. When the river comes in, if the density is lower than the basin water, it's called hypopitma. If it is the same density, it's homopitma. If it is higher density, it is hypopitma. So the talk I'm giving is mainly on this process. After that paper was published, 50 years passed, and some engineers conducted experiments, and they said that the river comes into the standing body of water, the flow transforms into turbidity points. The next year, a French uh, sedimentologist by name Thierry Monda, he published a paper which said the river flow goes all the way to the shelf edge and form deep water deposits. And these people who were reading all this, they said, okay, we have turbidity currents and these flows go all the way to the shelf edge, therefore they must form submarine fans. But for all this, there are no data. It's all pure imagination. And then there are some Chinese group that said if that is the case, then they must form petroleum reservoirs. So it's like a deck of cards. One assumption based on the another assumption based on another assumption. I was reading all this. It was published in the AP Bulletin. So I wrote a discussion saying this is all nonsense. And that's coming out in a couple of months. So in order to verify really what's going on, I selected 21 rivers all over the world and see whether this story is correct. And these rivers include Mississippi, Amazon, Congo, you name it, all the big rivers in the world. I'm going to show satellite images. You decide for yourself. This is the Mississippi River. The plume comes out and it takes a turn, goes in the opposite direction. If the model is correct, it should go in this direction because the shelf edge is here. Why is that? Because of the wind forcing and shelf currents. They redirect the whole thing. You go to China, this is the Yellow River, and during 95, it formed a nice delta-type low. Later, due to various constructions and so on, the southern trend is topped, it breached, and started opening a new one. So this is what I call horsetail blue. When you look at the whole thing, the sediment comes out, they're all blocked, by tidal shear flow. So the sediment is not moving into the deep sea. When you look at the Yangtze River, this is the city of Shanghai, the sediment comes out, they are all reworked along the shoreline like a mud belt. And that's because of the corrosion that tend to rework the sediment. So to compare the Yellow River with the Yangtze River, Sediment comes up, they form a low, 
and it is controlled by the shear so the sediment do not goes into the deep water. In this case, there are washing from the river, they are all plastered along the shoreline. They do not move into the deep sea. This is the Alaska. In Alaska, there is a Chignik River. This is a bright delta, and they form linear bloom because of high gradient. Again, they don't move into the deep sea. This is in uh, New Zealand. This is uh, one other person I mentioned, Morgan McPherson. He recently retired. He rented a helicopter and flew over this delta and then merged into this standing body of water. When you look at the closer, it goes as a linear flow. It will not go into the deep water. When you go to South America, this is the Rio de la Plata estuary. That's there. A lot of sediment coming into the Parana River, into the estuary. This is about 200 kilometers wide. When they come to the South Atlantic, all the sediments got wiped out. Why? Because of the Brazil current. That's the location of the ocean. Even the chlorophyll, they tend to move northward, not seaward. This is the Zambesi River. Here they, they form the coalescing low bay plume. Here the Mozambique current tend to control a plume they do not go into the deep sea. Nile River, long short current control delta, and do not propagate into the deep sea. This is the Gulf of the Bees. Here, the water of the river, the sediment comes down, take a U turn and move up. That's controlled by the ocean. We are going to South India, 